I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Do you do any audio work? Maybe you want to see that what the frequency response of an audio amplifier is. To do this, you'd use a signal generator and an oscilloscope, stepping through frequency by frequency by frequency, noting the output while keeping the input amplitude the same. Then it's off to the spreadsheet to create a graph from the data. Or maybe you work with an AV team at a church or other organization and you need to adjust the graphic equalizer for your system. You could use a similar process. But any way you do it, it's painful and tedious. What I'm going to show you today is a way that you can do this on the cheap, quick and easy. This is what I use and it works fantastic. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So let's go see what we need to make this work. In order to make this work, you need a stereo audio input for your computer. If you're using a PC like I do, you'll find that the default audio input on the computer is monaural only. That's just one channel. So how do we fix this? Well, we purchase a stereo audio interface that plugs into the USB port. For under $30, you can buy this Bayringer UCA222, which gives you line level stereo input and output. And this is what I use. You'll also need some way awesome free software. The one that I use is called Visual Analyzer. It does a huge amount of stuff for you, among which is an audio oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer using the hardware available on your computer. A link to the download page is on, in the description below. Download this and install it on your computer. Now we have to get the computer ready for the job. This begins by installing the driver for the UCA222 before plugging it into your computer. I have supplied a zip file which contains both the driver and the manual for the UCA222. The link to this zip file is in the description below. Once the driver is installed, plug the UCA222 into the computer and let Windows do its installing thing. Besides installing the UCA222 driver and visual analyzer software, you will need to configure your PC to operate with a stereo input. If we don't do this, then the left channel will be sent to both the left and the right channels, and the right channel input will be ignored altogether. So, let's get this thing done. First, we go down here, and we choose Settings, we choose System, we go to Sound, we go down here to Sound Control Panel. We go to the Recording tab. If you do not see a Stereo Mix entry on this tab, right-click and select Show Disabled Devices from the list. Make sure it's checkmarked. Then Stereo Mix should appear on the list. Right-click on the Stereo Mix Click on the Enable. Now find the new microphone device with the USB audio codec. See it says USB audio codec. Click on this, right click, choose Properties. Rename it anything you want. I renamed it the Bayringer UCA222 just so I know exactly what it is. I changed its icon from a microphone to this lovely cable so I know that it's a cable connected device. Then we're going to go over to the Advanced tab. And under the Advanced tab, we're going to go to Default Format. It will come up looking like this. And what you want to do is select this, go down to 2 channel, 16 bit, 48,000 hertz DVD quality. Uncheck every other checkbox on this page. And then click on OK. Click on OK. 
close your settings. Now, I, at this point, I choose to restart my computer just to be sure that everything took. And so while the computer is restarting, let's get the UCA 222 set up for measurement. The Visual Analyzer software will use the output of the USB interface to provide a test signal. It will then listen to the stereo inputs for a response. I use an RCA Y connector like this one to connect the left channel output to the right channel input. The right channel input serves as a reference to the visual analyzer software. This is what we're sending out to our circuit under test. The other end of the Y connector becomes the signal source for our test circuit. The left input becomes the response input to the visual analyzer software from the output of your circuit or system. Now, let's move on to getting the visual analyzer software ready to go. Start a visual analyzer. I am using 2021 R1 32-bit version. And the first step in this process is getting Visual Analyzer connected to the UCA 222 audio interface. Once Visual Analyzer is completely up, locate the input and output settings up at the top of the screen. Use these to connect to your Bay Ringer UCA 222. Next, we set Visual Analyzer to display the transfer function or frequency response of our unit under test. Take a look down in the lower right hand corner down here and you'll find the channels. We're going to select A slash B transfer function. We also want to average our response to smooth it out. You'll find the average field also down here. Now, you could choose anything from 20 or greater. I prefer 60. Now, I'm going to change the color of the transfer function display to make it easier to see. Select the settings item, and then colors, and then set transfer color. I'm going to choose white, and then OK. The next step is to set up the test signal source. Click on the wave button. And the first thing we want to do is disable the right B channel. We're going to set this for 15% here. We're going to go up here to the left A channel and select pink noise. And then we're going to finally set this to some number 5% or below. Now we're going to grab this whole box and put it over here. It's happy to live over here for the time being. We will be coming back to it later when we're ready to start testing. Notice also that we can turn the wave on and off. We can change the Y scale. We can change the number of dB per step on the scale. We can do all kinds of wonderful things down here in this lower corner. We're just about ready to go. We have to do the hardware setup next. We need to connect the output of the UCA222 to the input of our device or system we're going to be testing. Then we have to connect the output of the device or system that we're going to be testing to the unused left channel input of the UCA222. Now be careful if there's a possibility of some sort of DC level being present on the output of the device or system, then take a 0.1 microfarad capacitor put it in parallel with a 10 microfarad or larger capacitor, and then insert this combination between the device or system and the UCA222 input. If you're using a polarized capacitor, like an aluminum electrolytic for the larger value capacitor, be sure to pay attention to the polarity. Now, we're ready to dive into our demonstration. I am working on creating a mixer which will accept my custom DIY microphone inputs and provide an output to go to a recording system which wants line level inputs. This mixer has a maximum of about 30 dB of gain, which means a voltage gain of about 32. I do not want to overdrive my UCA222 inputs, 
So I have to keep the output from Visual Analyzer low enough so the output of the mixer is below the maximum input level of the UCA222. This is why we turn the output volume down so low. I connect the output from my UCA222 to one of the mixer inputs, and then I connect the mixer output to the UCA222 input. I power up the mixer from my lab supply, and we are good to go. The first thing we do is turn on the wave by clicking on the wave on button in the lower right hand corner of the main screen. Now we turn on the visual analyzer by clicking the on button in the upper left hand corner of the main screen. Now we have to make sure our levels are within range. Observe the level indicators in the upper right hand side of the main window. Neither of them should ever be all the way to the top. If you needed to adjust them, you would come here and you could adjust them up and down as necessary to achieve the level that you need. Everything is adjusted and we're now ready to observe our results in the lower pane of the main window. We don't actually see anything there, but we remember, remember the gain of this mixer is around plus 30, and we're seeing minus 9 here, so let's grab this and drag it up. Oh, well there it is. And we can make it stand out a little more. There we go. So now we can see the frequency response of our mixing circuit. Now by clicking and holding, you can see the value at any given point. Here at one kilohertz about, it's 29.7 dB. And you can go over here and say, okay, 29.7, so 26.7 is the minus 3 dB point. And so you can drag it over here and look for 26.7. Say, oh, it's right around somewhere between 70 and 80. Notice that it is jumping 10 hertz at a time. That's what Visual Analyzer uses, 10 hertz increments. And so you kind of lose resolution below the 100 hertz level. So there you have a simple demonstration. Now, let's go on to the more complex system of an AV system with a mixer, amplifier, microphones, and speakers. The process is exactly the same. What is different is how we interface with the system's mixer. Now, for most mixers, you will need a quarter inch or 6.4 millimeter TRS or stereo headphone plug to an RCA plugs cable. Mixers generally have an insert jack associated with each channel. In my experience, this is a TRS jack. And you say, well, what is a TRS jack? It stands for tip, ring, sleeve. The tip is the send. That is the output from the mixer that goes to the inserted device's input. The ring is the return, that is the input back from your inserted device. And then the sleeve is the common for these two signals. To do this test, the Bayringer UCA222 is an inserted device. So we plug our TRS plug into the insert jack of the main channel of interest. And this might be the main microphone channel. The RCA plug associated with the tip is connected to the input of our UCA222. The RCA plug associated with the ring of our TRS jack gets connected to the output side of the UCA222. We enable the channel on the mixer, set the desired level, and then begin the test as I've already described, setting levels and the like. Now you're going to hear pink noise coming out of the speakers and that might be unpleasantly loud, but 
we need to be reasonably loud levels to properly characterize the system. Maybe wear earplugs if it's uncomfortable. So what you're going to see in the lower portion of the screen is the overall response of the mixer, the equalizer or whatever else happens to exist between the mixer and the amplifier, the amplifier itself, the speakers, the acoustics in the room, the frequency response of the microphone, and back into the mixer. You're going to see the entire system of everything. You'll see all of the acoustic resonances and frequency response limitations of the entire system. If you're going to be adjusting a graphic equalizer, the object is to set the individual frequency of the graphic equalizer such that you get close to a flat line across the display as you can. Now, because of averaging, there is some delay in the response. So you could use fewer averages to speed up the display, but you don't, won't have as smooth of a line to work with either. There are trade-offs. You might even get away with as few as 20 average points. So there you have it. How to do some audio frequency response work on the cheap. But if you need more precision, such as with a sh very sharp band pass or band reject filter, then you're going to be relegated once again to the old signal generator and oscilloscope, tabulating numbers and plotting them in Excel. But for most every other sort of application, this is just an awesome tool. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.